Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 320. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google+. And uh, yes, there still is a, a Google+, Plus, David. Um, and um, what, what is this Google+, Plus? Uh, let's not get held up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we also answer questions from the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Micah fisher Kirshner. Micah is uh, head of SEO for Turn River Capital in the USA. Uh, Micah is based on the west coast uh, of the US uh, uh, near Silicon Valley. Tim Kapper is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, David Rosam is, is a leading uh, internet marketer based in West Sussex. Uh, um, he uh, is a copywriter of uh, many years standing. And um, you can find David at DavidRosam.com. And Masataki Wasa is uh, webmaster of wasaweb.net in uh, the UK. Uh, he's uh, based in uh, Wimbledon, uh, in London. Um, Masataki is also a Google top contributor on the uh, uh, AdSense community. And Tim Kappa is a Google top, uh, uh, sorry, a Google product specialist um, in the AdSense community. And uh, Tim Kappa is uh, a member of the Google My Business, is a Google product expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business community. All right, we have 14 questions tonight. Uh, let's um, look at the uh, first one. This one from Noel and uh, Anderson. Uh, it's on SEO for a site with multiple locations. Um, Nolan goes on to say, to ask, uh, what's the best way to structure SEO for a site with multiple locations, multiple services, each with multiple subservices? The site has a services tab and a locations tab in the main menu. For the locations tab, I'm planning on showing uh, each location, which when clicked would show the services at that location. And when you click a service, it would show the subservices for that service. And then clicking on that subservice would open up a dedicated page for that subservice. This way, I can get great local SEO. For the services tab, I'm planning on showing the services offered. And when you click on a service, then you would see the subservices offered. I would not plan on creating any subservice pages here, though, since they are already listed under the locations tab. Does that sound like it's well-structured uh, SEO for a site like this? Uh, and he gives us uh, a short video walkthrough, which can be seen uh, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Phew. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Except, okay, um, I'm just trying to picture uh, exactly what you meant. However, I would do it possibly in a slightly different way, which would make it better for the, well, I think better for the user, regardless of where they come in from into your site. So I would essentially have location, uh, sorry, services, obviously in your nav and locations next to it, which allows them to search vice versa. So the services, they would, obviously you would list your top line services and then um, as they hover down those, it then branch out to the sub services offered, you know, in, in a standard large, um, like any standard large navigation tab. Um, so they can either go through into the main services or directly from the navigation into the sub services. And on that, you would list what your service is. And then from there, you could have buttons saying, 
these are the locations that only uh, provide these kind of subservices, or these are the ones which provide the um, main service, uh, which is good because you know you're telling you're telling clients immediately you know whether they waste if you know if you do provide it in that location or you don't provide it in that location. Equally, on the flip side, going down into your locations pages. Uh, the user can pick their location and they can see what on that page what is the um, what is the the services that you provide from that location as well as your sub services they can then again click through to visit the actual service to double check to the service page to double check if that's the correct service they're looking for so by either or whatever whatever way the user is searching they can search by the services, see if you provide it for them, or the location, see if you provide that for them. Um, you know, because they may not necessarily be coming through from an actual location page. They could have searched for a particular service and landed on the service page, um, and then double checking whether they, you offer that in the location, and vice versa. Um, so that, that's personally the way I would do it. I think that's what you were meaning, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but also in terms of your actual location pages themselves, I would also concentrate on making them unique. Now, just by differentiating be them being different from the, they probably all offer all or most of the same top line services, but some of them would differ in the sub services. So some would say, yes, we offer X, Y, Z, and the other page would not offer that, but it would offer ABC. Um, so therefore they are slightly different. But I would also go so far as making it, you know, if you uh, really want these location pages to work, I would, you know, same thing, you would have your name and address, opening hours, telephone numbers. You could even go so far as adding in there who, you know, who people would meet um, on that particular one. This is our team that works these locations. It's you know, Jim, David, and 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 Masataki work in in this location, and in this location, it's um, it's it's Micah, Tim, and 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 the Wooby. You know, um, so yeah, you could you could change them up. You know, really try and make them uh, as unique as possible um, to to that particular area uh, for them to really really work. Uh, obviously, depending on your, you know, I mean, sometimes people, even, even still those cookie cutter, um, just replacing the name, they still work for less, you know, le less less competitive uh, areas. But, you know, still take the time and, and, and make those um, actual landing location, you know, the location pages uh, unique to, 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 to the site. Thank you, Tim. Brilliant answer. Um, anybody want to add anything to that? Okay, so we're on, on to the next, if I can find my mouse. This one from Varun Kumar Riyat. Um, it's on promoting my gaming websites. Uh, um, I don't know what fandom is, but uh, Varun said, uh, Hi, is fandom the right place to promote my client gaming websites? We are looking for 500 to 1,000 page views per day. I want to know the pages I, I created won't be deleted like Wikipedia and, it, and it's the right one. I have created them in the right way. Thanks. Um, and he uh, gives a, a link which can be seen on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Should call out Michael Martinez. Um, he is a stalwart of our community. Uh, he answers questions um, through the week. Um, he said that you should review their terms of service page. No one here can guarantee that your submissions won't be deleted or edited on a wiki site, but the rule of thumb is that self-promotional content is not welcome on these sites. No other comments? 
Uh, yeah, so look, um, I don't know much about gaming. What I do know is that YouTube has massive, massive channels with gamers on there which look at recordings of freaking games. I don't get it. Um, but they're there. So rather than trying to sort of get yourself on maybe chat rooms um, and like Michael pointed out, the terms of services, um, I would look at creating a community. And essentially, if you've got a gaming website, that's what you're going to need is a community. So although I don't really know about it, I would say my first point of call would be creating a community on YouTube, for example, of these gaming sites, getting, you know, creating some form of, I don't know, I haven't looked at your site, but creating some form of, you know, maybe you've already got some active users on your site, um, getting them involved uh, in the community, getting them to post their stuff, you know, maybe they've already got their own little bits of online followers posting recordings of the games or whatever these these gaming things do. Um, and I would say your first point of call is to start creating a community where there already is a shed ton of these. Um, if you're, you know, if you're unique enough uh, and you can create and foster that kind of um uh, community, uh, that gaming community feel and vibe, then I can't see it, uh, then I can't see you going wrong. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's uh, move on from this one on to number three on our own list uh, from Paulo Caesar. Um, Paulo, uh, people say uh, SEMrush for keywords, Ahrefs for backlinks. As of 2019, uh, is this still really the case? Uh, um, what? Which people say? I've never heard of that phrase before. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to know who's been saying that. Are you going to punch him on the nose or something? <laughs> hey, you know, it's just, you, you got to be a little more specific than, than that. Um, so, like, there are, there are a variety of tools out there. People prefer different types. People prefer other things. Is that still true? Yeah, it depends on which people we talk about. Um, but in all seriousness, um, the use of tools can vary. Um, Ahrefs, some people prefer Ahrefs, others are in, uh, Majestic. Um, and same thing goes, depending on the size of your company or which ones you use, their SEMrush, search metrics, Bright Edge, et cetera. Um, your view of what you use and prefer and like to go for can vary. So I don't know the numbers offhand just to know what is more popular uh, or used more uh, versus the others or to say which one is fully better based on any kind of good metrics. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say, though, that um, um, over the years, um, uh, SEMrush has outstripped, um, I mean, say three, four years ago, uh, nobody would have seriously said that uh, SEMrush is um, um, better, better, like um, Ahrefs was a... Was a uh, unique uh, operator, um, whereas now uh, SEMrush is occupying that position. 
Is that the yeah, I mean, the competition in the market and how things have shifted has has definitely gotten has definitely a, a changed kind of the nature of what people look for or what people use. Um, and that's good. More competition, better for us. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't live without SEMRush. I should also point out that SEMRush uh, provide uh, many of our panelists uh, with a Guru subscription gratis. Um, and uh, we should acknowledge that. But um, as I say, I couldn't live without it. No. Comment? Same here. It's, uh, I, I think I use it nearly every day. Yeah. My right. own, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, but uh, for local, for me, you know, there are a couple of other little bits that I need to use. But I mean, Semrush keeps working on their local aspect um, side of things, and specifically, yeah, I mean, I've well, you know, Paulo, this is this is the thing, you know, both of these offer uh, thirteen. You know, limits trials. Chuck them in. You know, it, it 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 with a lot of these tools, it's what you feel works better for you because everybody slightly uses tools differently, finds their own thing. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, give them both a shot. Um, see what works for you. You know, maybe maybe you spot something more useful in one than the other. Um, maybe you like both to sign up for both, you know, um, it's, it's, enti it's entirely really what you're looking for, um, and what you're using for personally, I don't, I, I very, very, very rarely, uh, look at backlinks if hardly ever. Mm. Um, so it's not a major issue for me, and therefore I've, and also I've never really used a Ahrefs for that either. Yeah, so give them both a, you know, their 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 free trial, their limited trial, see what works for you. Cool. Okay, let's go into number four in our run list. Um, four down, ten to go. Michelle Corn asks. Uh, this is an SEO question about hyphens. Uh, um, so a lot of words have hyphens uh, which regular lay people don't use when uh, writing. When you use uh, KWS, uh, or you mean keywords in your copy, should they be with or without hyphens or a combination of both? Thanks. Um, I think... Um uh, one and the same. I think grammar and SEO have merged over the, the past few years. I think that Google is very good at uh, ignoring our um, use or not use of uh, of hyphens and other grammatical strangenesses. Um, so write, write as you feel is correct right as you feel is grammatically right um don't worry about it uh i thought this was going to be a a question about hyphens in urls thank god thank god it isn't um let's forget about worrying about hyphens just just get out and write some good content uh google and your readers will understand it whether you whether whether you use hyphens or not there will be a few grammatical pedants who will complain about your your use of hyphens or not use of hyphens I may be one of them, in fact, but uh, really, just just get the meaning over, get it over correctly, make it a nice read, and don't worry about the the little dashes between words. Thank you, David. Right, let's um, move on from that one. I don't know what the link in. Um um michelle's comment on on um, the the dumb seo questions facebook group uh la hat lane yeah i don't know what that means anyway let's go to the next 
Bilal Anwar is really confused about using the href lang tag. Um, he said, my country has three different domains like xyz.com, xyz.co.uk and xyz.ae. Uh, they want to rank uh, for each country respectively. And, and now I'm confused about the result. Um, should I use the, the hreflang tag or should I work as separate domains with different content? Uh, P.S. Um, it is an IT service provision website. Well, if you've already got these country domains, right, they should have content specific based to that, you know, if, if you're going to use them, they should have specific content for those countries, languages, and nuances. Um, so yeah, you should have those on there, specific to those countries. And then you know, the pages would more or less likely be, you know, the same kind of sites. And on each uh, site, then you would annotate via hreflang the corresponding domain for that page in that language. But yes, with hreflang, you have to still have that page in that language. You know, so all hreflang is doing is saying, this this page is available in this language on that URL. And normally you keep the same structure, you know, throughout the sites. So it's easy for you to map them out. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be on the same kind of structure, uh, you know, but what you're saying is this, this page equates to that language and then Google kind of understands that, aha, uh -huh, okay. So this one is the one to show in this language and this one is the one to show in the specific language. Um, yeah, so look, there are, yeah, I think you need to, to understand what you're doing in your domain wise. It doesn't even have to be separate domains. You can use, if you could get a top level.com, for example, or if you were based on, I see you had a .co.uk, but so let's say you were based in the, in the UK, so then it would make sense for you to have a .co.uk. Ideally, if you're going to use one site, I would try and have a, you know, a .com for that brand. And then you can, obviously, you can have the different language pages on the site, and then those can be annotated, you know, so you can literally have one site, but, you know, for the different language pages versions. Um, so there's a few ways to go there, but you really need to understand which way you're going first, whether you're going to use the different domains, whether you're going to use one domain with multi-language pages or multiple sites with multi-language. And then once you decide which way you're going to go there, you then need to work out your um, hreflang and the structure you're going to be using uh, for that. Yeah. Thank you, so, yeah, it really depends how you're going to set up and what you have on these different sites. If you have .com, .co.uk, .ae, and Perhaps you have the same, essentially the same content on the three um, domains. Let's say you have an English version and an Arabic version, and you have those on all those three sites, but with different contact details. Say that the .com has a US contact detail, .co.uk, UK detail, uh, .ae, I suppose it's the UAE. Um, then, you know, um, then you would be using hreflang um, even for different English language versions because then it's the language locale that's going to matter. So, you know, if you're going to aim for an English speaking visitor from the UAE, you want to direct that person to the English version page on .ae. Whereas if you're you know, looking for someone uh, from the UK, um, then you want that person to go to the .co.uk page. So it really depends what you have and how you've set things up. Thank you, Micah. 
Okay, let's move on to the next. Ooh, I have a new identity now. What's wrong, Micah? Uh, sorry, Masataki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well. It's okay, I was speaking through Masa anyway. Uh, yeah, okay. JLo asks a question titled Meta Descriptions and Title Tags for Pagination Pages. JLo wants to know Is it worth the time and effort to come up with unique meta descriptions and title tags for pagination pages? It seems that there are three ways to deal with the duplicate meta description and title tags. Uh, with these um, one give them a total unique title meta slash meta descriptions um is it worth it uh, it seems very time consuming uh, for me to give a little modification like this is page two um i'm not sure it is to do anything especially for the meta description since i don't know those numbers mean anything to a user on search engine results pages or three just leave them duplicated I wonder what would you uh, deal with uh, title uh, meta description with pagination pages? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, I would not say this is time consuming whatsoever. You can uh, create a system that basically says if parameter uh, includes p equal to, then put into the title tag, you know, add, append page two. P equals, if P equals three, append page three. So knowing that's going to take a while, it's worth it, um, especially if you're not, uh, as an example, no indexing your um, paginated pages. So yeah, the, the, the value to, at least from a title tax perspective, I think is worthwhile. Um, and this is something that, you know, even Google will ping and complain about in the old Search Console tool. Meta description, um, I would definitely at least remove the meta descriptions from uh, the paginated pages at a minimum. Uh, you can still do the same thing in automated and put in a, a template uh, that basically says to the effect of like, you know, a sentence and then, or not, uh, some type of intriguing portion of what the page is about, and then put in a sentence, this is page X of Y, um, as a way to create a template, scale it, and it doesn't take very, very long to actually do. Um, and I think in the end, it, it's, it's worth doing that. Thank you, Micah. Didn't get that right. Well, I really should say thank you, Masataki, just to square things up. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's uh, move on to the next, and unless somebody wants to add something. All right. Um, this one from Zun Min Lee, um, who needs some help for local SEO. Uh, Zun Min said, uh, hi, guys, I'm new here, and I just made up uh, a website for selling wine targeting New Zealand, and I need some help for local SEO. Can somebody advise where to start? where to look and what's a reasonable budget to start with. I'm um, looking to hire someone to help me optimize slash search engine optimize my site, www.winelab.co.nz. Uh, I want to promote our website locally in New Zealand uh, for increased sales and good ranking for some keywords uh, on Google. Uh, thanks in advance uh, for your advice. Well, the first thing is, is you should be regularly checking my uh, blog. That is a given for anyone that's into local SEO, uh, you know, um, certainly. Uh, follow me on all my social channels. I share some golden stuff. Um, as for... Yeah, As for, um, you know, you, you, yeah, you know, there's some like really basic local SEO principles. Um, 
Um, just having a quick look at your site here. I mean, you've got a shed load of stuff in there. You, you, you also need possibly an e-com. Um, hang on, what's with all these different countries, man? Oh, those are actually by wine. You know, you've got a lot of stuff. I would also be looking at maybe some e-com here. Uh, you've got, you know, you've got a lot of stuff. But in terms of, I'm assuming, when you say local, I mean, where are you? So, right, so it's an actual office. You don't have an actual showroom where people can come and taste or yeah so um yeah i would be looking more at ecom rather than local because ooh, you're not really local in the sense that you know you're in let's say um yeah there are some basic you know principles that you can put in place yeah but i would be looking at more technical um stuff here for you um okay anybody else on this one and i'm just looking here it's all online yeah you don't qualify either for a gmb page I mean, you could use it as a corporate office, but in terms of appearing the local pack, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I miss, uh, I misunderstood this entirely. Although, if I'd read the uh, read the the question properly, I I thought that this was about New Zealand wine specialist New Zealand wine but obviously isn't it's targeting New Zealand um, but yes yeah it's an e-com wine site for oh. New Zealand it's not they're just not local yeah I agree with you totally yeah just like you would you know you wouldn't be able to be appearing in the in the local pack for anything which is like the basic premise of sort of local you know when somebody searches wine shop, you know, my nearest liquor store, um, depending on what location they're searching in and how you've targeted, you, you, you wouldn't be able to appear uh, in the local pack uh, in that sense. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you know, like in the terms of a local thing, I don't know. Do you have distributors in, in like from a local, if you wanted to appear, you know, like, like increase sort of more localized content or data within the, within, within the site for this, for, for, for an, uh, an e-com wine, I would be looking at, um, what, who are local in the sense you know who actually have a, a physical location <clears throat> so do you have distributors um i don't know if you are your own brand or you sell every every brand i don't you know so do you have distributors uh local distributors um people that stock your product um that are local etc you could do a a specific page on that whether it be click and collect whether um, you know someone locally actually uses you where there's a physical location that they could go in and taste or purchase from them um so that's the kind of angles if you were talking in the local seo sense that um you should be looking at yeah yeah thank you tim 
Okay, so we're past the halfway mark and we're on to number eight on our run list from Tyler Marin. It's titled ClickFunnels Duplicate Content Issue. Um, and Tyler asks, uh, is there any uh, duplicate content issue with putting my ClickFunnels content on my actual WordPress site as long as uh, I know index um, CF? Uh, I suppose that means ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels serve their purpose and driven by uh, pay-per-click, but some of the content we made there um, would make for good site content. I can turn off uh, the indexing uh, of uh, the ClickFunnels, but I just want uh, your two cents worth uh, before doing that. Yeah, so it all depends on how you've on, on what's on that page, how you've created it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it it just really depends on what's on that page. Um, and, and some of them are actually, it all depends how you create it. Some pages in itself, look, they, they, they are unique enough and to be able to perform, you know, pretty well and organic. However, some um, aren't uh, because, you know, you may have created, um, you know, really nice graphics, but there's like very little text on there apart from, you know, uh, it all depends on how you created it. And so people can go, yes, I'm interested. You click yes, and it fills down. Then, you know, it all depends on what the page looks like, if it would be of benefit to the site. Ordinarily, um, I mean, the ones that I've worked with or sites that I've worked with, they tend to be more posterized pages. So, of course, they offer really no value if somebody happened to click on it via organic because it just wouldn't make sense unless you came through from the targeted ad, either on Facebook or, you know, uh, or on AdWords. Except it just wouldn't make sense unless you were particularly following that specific ad or chain at the time. So, in that instance, we tend to just no index it because it serves it its particular purpose for that particular campaign or ad that was running. They click through, it's all, you know, themed, it, it all looks the same, and it serves its purpose in that moment, not for the site organically. Um, so really, it all depends on how you've created them and what they look like. And if, you know, if it would make sense in, the, in, in, in organic search results, um, yeah, it, it all depends. But in most of the times that I've, you know, ever when, when we've been working with this, at, we tend to know index it because it just, it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's just not suitable. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's move on to number nine on our run list. This one from Dean Hewer. Uh, Dean asks, uh, a question that's titled I'm trying to switch my site from HTTP to HTTPS uh, he says I've already migrated the site over to SiteGround which installs a free uh, SSL um, do I also need to do a redirect uh, is there anything else I need to do <clears throat> well um you should set your domain at HTTPS. Um, so, for example, you can do that, like I don't know what site you're on, but for example, if you're in WordPress, you can literally in the general settings set it to HTTPS, for example. Um, SiteGround takes care of the rest. If SiteGround is also the, um, you know, for your domain, you need to just remember to set whoever uh, has the domain you need you know in your 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 um uh your a uh, oh shit what's it called <laughs> that freaking a thingamajig you've got to change your ip yeah um and and of course set it to both dub 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 and you know uh in in your is it dns i don't know um 
whoever has your bloody email. And then, yeah, pretty much that's that's it done. But you, you need to set it in, you, you know, um, for example, WordPress, you can set that in your general settings. Um, but what you will know is that SiteGround's HTTPS won't kick in until you've sorted out from your your the actual domain, wherever that is, if that's in a different, you know, it's not on SiteGround, it's on, a diff, like, you know, you've bought it on one and one or wherever, you need to point that to the right place. Um, and that's about it. Yep. Um, I just point out um, that um, your domain records or DNS records um, don't take account of uh, which protocol you're using, uh, either HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, it's all the same on DNS. Yeah, but your AC, it still needs to go to the, the right IP. Exactly. All right, let's um, go to the next. Uh, this one's number 10 on our run list. Um, it's from Abinda Raj Dangal. It's titled, The Best Practice to Implement HREFBANG Tag. Um, <clears throat> I just need some clarity, it seems. He said, which is the best practice to imp implement the HREFBANG Tag in the header or in the sitemap? Um, while going through some articles, I learned that I can go with only one method. Um, is this true? Yes. Thanks in advance. Uh, well, it, it has to be in a header. Yeah. Because it's got to be on the page. On each page. Each page is unique. Because each page, so it's like a forward slash page A. Well, then it needs to, your href lang will say, right, for for to, to find this page in Japanese, then this page in Japanese, you will find it there. You you can't just have it sitting in a sitemap somewhere. It, you know, it needs to be page by page basis. Thank you, Tim. So to 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 clarify on some of this, um it, from what I remember, okay. Hreflang must either go in the header, the head of the, of the HTML, or it can go in the XML sitemap. Um, in those cases, though, the, the situation for that has to be a one-to-one -one map of the exact same thing for what pages you're trying to match to. So it's very finicky and very precise. If you mess up on a set of pages, those sets of pages won't look at the href ring as a result. The order can often matter as well. Um, there is no general preference between the use of two. You'll find though that most, I think most SEOs still prefer having it in the head section just because it's easier to diagnose and usually you have more uh, ability to fiddle with it than you do an XML sitemap, generally. Yeah, I think you could um, put it in the um, HTTP response code as well, um, you know, as a URL. You can, I think, use that in the header response, um, but I would personally put it on page um, for the reasons Micah I mentioned. Um, to a certain extent, it serves to localize the issue as well. If you've made a mistake, if you make a mistake in the sitemap, the whole sitemap might go up in flames, as it were. Whereas if it's a matter of, you know, if you made a few mistakes in or on certain pages, then that mistake is, if you like, contained on those pages. And that might be better in that sense. But I think, generally speaking, I think you should stick with what you feel most comfortable with. And I wouldn't use more than one method. And 
in case you do use more than one method, then make sure there are absolutely no conflicts whatsoever between those two. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, let me move on to the next. Number 11 on our run list. Um, it's on the recommended amount of keywords. Tara Robertson asks, uh, if you have unlimited reviews and FAQs on each product loaded with keywords on your website, would this help with rankings or is there a recommended amount? <laughs> so if you're going to have, well, I don't know how you can have unlimited amounts of reviews. Okay. Um, uh, secondly, uh, FAQs, I don't see how you can have unlimited amounts. Um, but I would say to you, place the, you know, if you want to go down the road of creating an exhaustive FAQ section on that product, go for it. Um, if, you know, if it's a product page and you accept um user reviews onto that then 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 great um i would probably at some point work out how you're going to display these um because you know let's say it's a very popular product and you've got six thousand reviews on there how are you going to properly display them? Um, you know, Amazon does it quite nicely. You know, they'll show you the first three, and then you need to obviously open up uh, the tab to 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 scroll through that. Um, but yeah, look, you know, <laughs> you still are going to need to use tabs because if you start getting crazy in the amount of stuff you're putting on there <laughs> you will need tabs you will need to structure it figure out your structure and, and, and what is usable but if you want to put on there you know you put enough on there to satisfy the user um reviews well it's not necessarily about satisfying the the, the, the you know the the user or making them uh, <laughs> it does help with the purchasing decision certainly but you know, having all six thousand on there, well, that's questionable. Um, but you are going to need to paginate it, or, or I mean, not paginate. You are going to need to tab it, or at least have it in some form of useful user experience, where people, if they wanted to start scrolling through, they can scroll through. You know, it needs to still be user friendly. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, let's go to the next on our run list. Number 12, from Lauren Baker. Um, it's on Shopify XML sitemaps being indexed. Um, Lauren said, um, Shopify X XML sitemaps are getting indexed and a good bit of traffic in Google. This is not good. Uh, besides Google Search Console, removal um has anyone else see this before and uh, any suggestions well how oh. yeah so <laughs> I, I mean i just noted in my comment that you could no index xml sitemaps so i mean that that you can do with the extra box tag. Um, that's that's one way to do it. It's yeah. really actually probably the only way beyond to actually get it permanently out. Yeah. These sort of things come and go. I mean, if you do a search for uh, 
robots text, you'll find that Google has indexed uh, about half of the robots text in the world. Um, you know, um, they, they, they do come and go, but um, they don't really have that much impact on search. It's only at our level where we get a bit anal um, looking at stuff that, that um, we um, find these anomalies. Anybody else? Okay, number 13, unlucky for some. Um, Dean Hua uh, asks a question titled Google Analytics Search Queries. Dean wants to know, does Google uh, Analytics also show search queries from a Google My Business listing, or is it only for Search Console? Yeah, you, you won't show the search queries, but, it, you know, UTM tracking codes will show you, obviously, uh, as a referral directly, what's coming to you. Um, search Console will show it, but unfortunately, Search Console has had a big uh, uh, change that they're not showing the search queries for UT UTM tracking codes anymore. Um, so, yeah. You're not okay. going to find the search queries. Just when Google Search Console gets useful, then they they remove it. It's it's uh, bread and circuses. It's only there to keep you confused and yeah. Stuff it was a whole big yeah. It was a whole big thing on UTM. Uh, initially, as they said it was a hiccup that the UTMs weren't appearing anymore in Search Console, and then they said, "No, nah, we're just not." going to show them. so yeah it's a bit of a pain because that was pretty much the only way of checking out so the only real option to you now is trusting the insights and the search queries provided by google my business actual insights which are horrendously shite okay all right, then let's look at our last question. Dominic White asked the question titled Google My Business Search Engine Optimization Question. Two businesses that share the same address. Um, Dominic said, if you have two businesses that share the same address, will it work for you to use a general coverage? instead of using the actual address twice. Okay, so, it's a little bit, bit odd here, right? So, you are, you, uh, you can, you can have many, many businesses at a location, uh, at an address, right? Um, but they are they are generally differentiated by the name of the business is going to be different, and of course the telephone number. If these are legitimate businesses, um, you often see in a lot of old old school. In fact, you still see it. You know, people go, "Oh, you've got to get your suite number in there," and blah 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 blah. But I mean, hey, you can look. You can pick any major city in the world. Pick a massive building that's full of lawyers, doctors, whatever. You know, these health centers or whatever. Same address throughout, 5,000 businesses in there, but they all do well on, on you know, there's no particular filter or anything because they could, they can all be there. Some remember to put, oh, we're on floor two. Some remember to put their suite in. Some do, some don't. You can have a legit business at the same address. It's not a problem. But um, they... Are differentiated and when you're building our citations because they have a different name they have a different telephone number they have a different domain right not a problem because you know they they're individual they may share the same address but they that you know that they're, they're in it's not a problem to build out citations what i'm trying to get and what i'm trying to understand is what i think you're trying to ask is we've 
we've got our main business and then we've created which we got away with which you shouldn't have creating a service style type gmb listing which we still use the same or the same sort of the same telephone number to the same place except actually it is one legit just one business but we've kind of created and got away with creating and so on in that instance no you do not want to create citations for that other one um because typically it's just going to be a variation of that name so you might have just called it you know you might be called bob's bob bob builders but one is bob's wall maintenance whatever you know it's typical it's it is just a service of the main business and it's in the same website or the same domain yeah in that instance i wouldn't go down the road just build out for your concentrate on your main business build that out um i wouldn't you know start trying to muck about with stuff like that um but if it's two separate legitimate businesses which they typically will have <laughs> a different name a different telephone number and a different domain there's no problem building citations out for that whatsoever. Thank you very much, Tim. If anybody would know, that would be you. Okay, um, I think that's all of our questions tonight. Yes, it is. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Uh, we thank you for watching us. Your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. Um, I thank uh, Masataki Wasa, David Rosam, Tim Kappa, and Micah Fisher Kirshner for their input tonight and uh, hope to see them all back uh, next week. Um, in the meantime, it's um, good night.